You're listening to Clyde's Favorite Old Time Radio, a podcast of the various genres of old time radio, science fiction, comedy, mystery, horror, and historical broadcasts. Hello, MPIR listener. This is Clyde J. Kale. Thank you so much for listening to Mystery Play Internet Radio. In these trying times, since most of us are being locked up in our homes, I, as a podcaster and as the operator of Mystery Play Internet Radio, want to continue to provide some outstanding entertainment of old-time radio. Please, if you have enjoyed the programming that Mystery Play Internet Radio provides, consider sending in a donation via PayPal. Go to www.mpir-otr.com and on the side menu, select the donations page. Again, that's www.mpir-otr.com and select the donation page. A donation of any amount will be greatly appreciated. You know, that extra $5 or $10 really adds up. And I want to continue broadcasting Old Time Radio and continue to bring these outstanding shows to you, maybe to help ease your mind during this crisis that we are all in together. Again, thank you so much for listening to Mystery Play Internet Radio. This is Ray Bradbury. Join me for the next 30 minutes on a tour through time and space. Come along to the far future. Follow me into a strange past with stories that almost could be or might have been. Real or unreal, this is Bradbury 13. Margaret Leary is 10 years old and likes to play in the vacant lot on long summer days. She and her friends like to play pirates and bank robbers and cowboys. One summer afternoon, Margaret was playing in the lot and discovered there was something buried deep in the ground. And it was still alive. Ray Bradbury's The Screaming Woman. Margaret Leary, and I'm in the fifth grade at Central School. I haven't any brothers or sisters, but I've got a nice father and mother, except they don't pay much attention to me. Anyway, we never thought we'd have much to do with a murdered woman. Or almost. When you're living on a street like we live on, you don't think awful things are going to happen, like shooting or stabbing or burying people under the ground, practically in your own backyard. You just go on buttering your toast or baking a cake. But I gotta tell you how it happened. It was noon on a steamy hot Saturday in the middle of July, and Mama came out the back door. Margaret, here's a dollar. Go to the store and get us some peppermint ice cream. Really? Yes, Daddy's home for lunch, so we'll have a treat. And bring back the change. I took the shortcut through the empty lot behind our house. It was a big lot with weeds and holes and broken glass and stuff. And on my way back from the store, I was hurrying along so the ice cream wouldn't melt. When all of a sudden, it happened. My gosh, what's that? It's coming from the ground. Oh my gosh, there's a woman buried down there. A woman under the ground. Oh my gosh. Lady, I'll be right back. I'll get you out. Don't stand there with the ice cream dripping. But, Mama... Put it in the ice box. Listen, 
Listen, Mama, there's a screaming woman in the empty lot. And wash your hands. They're filthy. She was screaming and screaming. Of course she was. Wash your hands and hurry to the table. Listen to me. we got to dig her out. She's buried under tons and tons of dirt. And if we don't dig her out, she'll choke up and die. I'm certain she can wait until after lunch. Mama, don't you believe me? Of course, dear. When you've finished your hands, take this plate of meat to your father in the dining room. Yes, ma'am. But I don't even know who she is. And we got to help her before it's too late. Good heavens, look at this ice cream. What did you do, just stand out there in the sun and let it melt? I told you, there's this woman in the... Oh, go on, scoot in there with the plate. I'm going. Hi, Dad. There's a screaming woman in the empty lot. I never knew a woman who didn't. I mean, for real. You look serious. We've got to get picks and shovels and dig. Like for an Egyptian mummy. I don't feel like an archaeologist, Margaret. Maybe when it gets a little cooler outside, like in October, we'll go and dig that mummy up. But we can't wait that long. Pass the mustard, please. Dad, you just gotta come out after lunch and help me. Mm -hmm. Dad. Margaret, turn the radio on. Mm -hmm. Dad, I'll give you all the money in my piggy bank. Oh, so it's a business proposition, is it? How much do you pay an hour for digging? I got it. Five whole dollars. It took me a year to save. You can have it all if you come out and help me. Margaret, you're serious about that money, aren't you? Yes. Well, you know, you really make your old dad feel like a piker. A piker? You want me to play with you, and you're willing to pay me for my time. Oh, I don't give you enough time, do I? I tell you what. After lunch, I'll come out and listen to your screaming woman. Free of charge. How's that? Will you really? Yes, ma'am. That's what I said. But you have to promise me something. What? You eat your lunch first, and then I'll come out. I promise. Okay. Temperature here at WJAM is a warm 97 degrees. Young lady, slow down. You're gulping your food. But... You heard your mother. But the screaming woman. We gotta hurry. I intend to sit here quietly and judiciously, giving my attention first to my steak, then to my potatoes and my salad, and, of course, then to my ice cream. And after that, to a long drink of iced coffee, if you don't mind. I may be a good hour at it. And another thing, young lady, if you mention this, this screaming, what is it, one more time at this table during lunch, I won't go out with you to hear her recital. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Now eat slowly. Speaking of screaming... Charlie and Helen Nesbitt had another fight last night. Well, that's nothing new. They're always fighting. You ask me, Charlie's no good. Or her either. Uh, I don't know. I think she's all right. <laughs> you were just prejudiced. Prejudiced? Well, you did almost marry her. That again. I was only engaged to her for six weeks. Well, at least you had sense enough to break it off. Oh, you know, Helen, always stage-struck. Wanting to be a movie star. Longing for Hollywood. I just couldn't see a marriage like that working. It was kind of sweet, though. Sweet and very kind. And what did it get her? A big brute like Charlie. I've got a temper, all right. Remember when Helen had the lead in her high school play? Pretty as a picture. She wrote the songs for it herself. That was the summer she wrote that song for me. Huh. Don't laugh. It was a catchy song. You never told me about that. No, it was between Helen and me. Besides, I forgot all about it until now. How did that song go? Dad! All right, I'm eating, I'm eating. Finish your potato. After the slowest meal in the history of eating, I took Dad out to the empty lot, where it was still hot and covered with old bottles and newspapers. Now, where's this screaming woman? We forgot the shovel. We'll get them later, after I hear her. She's over here, under these rocks. Listen. I don't hear anything. Shh, wait. Margaret. Hey! Honey, I suggest you get in out of the sun and lie down for a while. But she was here. I heard her screaming and screaming. See, here's where the ground's been dug up. Hey, you down there, can you hear me? Margaret, this is the place Mr. Kelly dug up yesterday to bury that big sack of trash. We watched him, remember? But during the night, someone else used Mr. Kelly's hole to bury a woman in and then covered it all up. Well, I'm going in out of the sun and take a nice, cool shower. You won't help me dig? Mr. Kelly might not like us digging up his trash. Oh, it's too hot to stay here anyway. And don't get dirty. Dawn, he's gone. There! She's screaming again. Maybe she was just tired and now she's all rested. Dad, Dad, she's screaming again. Come here, she's Margaret. screaming. Margaret! Dad, she's screaming just like before. 
are. I know, I know. Now, come on. You're going inside. But, Dad... I think you'd better get upstairs and lie down for a while. You'll feel better in an hour or so. But... Move. All right, now, hop in bed. But, Daddy, we can't let her die. She's all buried like that man in the story by Edgar Allan Poe. And think how awful it is to be down there screaming, and no one's paying any attention to you. You're going to lie there the rest of the afternoon and take it easy, and you're not to leave the house, understand? Now, close your eyes. Oh, Daddy, I wish you'd believe me. Maybe I could yell out the window about the screaming woman and someone would hear me. No, they'd just be like Mom and Dad and not pay any attention. There's just one thing to do. I've got to climb out the window, get some shovels from the garage, and dig her out myself. But I've got to hurry. Any faster. It's too hot. I gotta rest. I didn't know digging was such hard work. Hiya, Margaret. Hi, Dippy. What are you doing? Digging. For what? There's a screaming lady in the ground, and I'm digging for her. I don't hear no screaming. Just sit down and wait a while, and you'll hear her scream. You could even help me dig while you're listening. I don't dig unless I hear her scream. There! Did you hear it? Hey, that's good, Margaret. Do it again. Do what again? The scream. The scream? Yeah, go on, do it. Here, look it. Do it again and I'll give you my favorite marble. My brown Aggie. Hot dog. Can you teach me to do it? I don't. Did you get the Throw Your Voice book from that magic company in Texas? You got one of those tin ventriloquist things in your mouth? That's right, Dippy. And if you help me dig, I'll show it to you later. It's a deal. Give me a shovel. <sighs> Boy, you think she was right under your feet. What do you call her? Who? The screaming woman. You must have a name for her. Oh, sure. Her name's Wilma Schreiger, and she's rich, and she's 96 years old, and was buried by a man named Spike, who was a counterfeiter. Wow. And there's a box of treasure buried with her, and I'm a grave robber. Come to dig her up. Can I be a grave robber, too? Uh, sure. <coughs> hey, Casper says she's a perfect <coughs> almond ramen, and she's a mummy covered with diamonds and rubies. Okay, just keep digging. Hey, I just got an idea. Dippy, where are you going? I'm going to get a piece of cardboard and make a sign that says Slumberland Cemetery and stick it in the ground and bury some birds and beetles and stuff here. No, Dippy. It's more fun that way. I know where I can get a dead cat, too. Dippy, keep digging, please. Oh, uh, I'm tired. I think I'll go home and cool off. You can't. Says who? Dippy, there's something I need to tell you. What? There really is a woman buried down here. Sure there is, Maggie. You don't believe me either. Tell me how you throw your voice and I'll keep digging. I can't tell you because I'm not doing it. Okay, see you around. Look, I'll stand way over here, see? And you stay there and listen. See? Hey, there really is a woman buried down there. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Let's dig. Now you're talking. I read a book 
played magic once, and there was this Hindu guy with no clothes on who got down in a grave and slept there 60 days and nights and didn't eat anything. <sighs> Say, what if it's just a radio buried down there and we did all of this for nothing? Well, a radio's nice. We could keep it. Hey, you kids, what do you think oh. you're doing? Uh, Mr. Kelly, you scared the daylight out of me. Now, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to take those shovels and put that dirt right back where you got it. You understand? But, Mr. Kelly, there's a screaming woman down there. A screaming woman? Well, I don't hear anything. Well, just listen. Don't hear a thing. Now, go on. Fill it up. Get on home before I give you my boot. Yes, sir. Well, go on now. Hurry up. I'll be watching you from my window. He's the one. Huh? He murdered Mrs. Kelly and buried her here in a box. But she woke up after he buried her. Yeah. He stood right here while she screamed and said he didn't hear her. He lied to us. There's only one thing to do. What? We've got to call the police and have them come arrest Mr. Kelly. Come on. Dippy, I don't like hiding in these bushes. What if Mr. Kelly catches us? He won't. Look, here comes the police. Get down, I can't see. Shh. Yes, Mr. Kelly? Yes. What can I do for you? Is Mrs. Kelly at home? Yes, she is. Uh, may we see her, sir? Of course. Hey, Anna! Yes, what is it? I, uh, I beg your pardon, folks. Uh, we, we had a report that you were buried out in an empty lot, Mrs. Kelly. What? <laughs> it sounded like a child made the call, but we had to be certain. Sorry for the inconvenience. It's those blasted kids. If I ever catch them, I'll... Maggie, let's get out of here. Run! What do I do now? I gotta go home. Boy, we're really in trouble now. We're gonna lick him for this. But what about this screaming woman? To heck with her. We don't dare go back to that empty lot again. Mr. Kelly will be waiting for us for sure. He'll lambast the heck out of us. Hey! I just remember something. What? Isn't old man Kelly sort of deaf? Don't he wear a hearing aid sometimes? Oh, my gosh. No wonder he didn't hear a thing. Boy, we sure got into a lot of trouble over your dumb ventriloquist voice. I gotta go. Bye. Dippy! Dippy! <laughs> Darn. Now what do I do? The police are after me now for lying to them. And my dad's probably looking for me by now, too. There's only one last thing to do. I've got to go from house to house and knock on every door and ring every bell and see if there are any ladies missing. It might take me all day, but i got to do it. <laughs> Boy, I'm pooped. Fifteen doors so far, and no luck. I wonder if Helen Nesbitt's home. The one Dad almost married. Yes? Mr. Nesbitt. Oh, it's you, Margaret. Yes, good afternoon. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I came to see Mrs. Nesbitt. Oh? May I? Oh, uh, well, she's not here right now. She's gone to the store. I'll wait. Can I come in? Hey, wait a minute. Boy, it sure is nice and cool in here. Can I sit down? Oh, nice chair. Uh, listen, kid, I, I don't think you better wait. How come? Well, my wife won't be back. Oh? Uh, not today, that is. I thought you said she went to the store. Oh, well, she did, she did, but uh, she's going on from there to visit her mother. She won't be back for a couple of days, maybe a week or two. That's a shame. Why is that? I wanted to tell her something. What? I wanted to tell her there's a woman buried over in the empty lot, screaming under tons and tons of dirt. Are you all right, Mr. Nesbitt? 
Well, uh, well, yes, of course. Well, I'll, I'll be sure and tell Helen when she comes home. Uh, she'll be glad to hear it. Thanks. It's a real woman, you know. How do you know that? I heard her. You heard her? That's right, screaming. How do you know it isn't a mandrake root? What's that? Well, it's a, it's kind of a plant, kid. They scream. They do? Yeah, I, I read it once. Uh, how do you know it isn't a mandrake? I never thought of that. Well, you better start thinking. Uh, did you say anything about this to anyone? Sure. I told lots of people. Anybody doing anything about it? No. Nobody believes me. Of course they don't. You're just a kid, aren't you? I'm going back now and dig her out. Uh, wait. I gotta go. Oh, stick around. Thanks, but I gotta get back. Hey, hey, you know how to play cards, kid. I can play blackjack. Hey, good. We'll have a game. I gotta go dig. Plenty of time for that. Anyway, maybe my wife will be home before long. You can wait for her while we play cards. You think she'll be home, huh? Well, sure, kid. Say, that voice in the ground, uh, is it very strong? No, it gets weaker all the time. <laughs> Sit down, Margaret. Let's play that game of blackjack. It's more fun than playing Screaming Woman. I gotta go. Well, stick around. My wife will be home in ten minutes. Let's play. You deal first. Well, your luck's holding. You win again. It's late. I gotta go now. A few more minutes, kid. My wife will come home any time now. Your deal. Well, it's getting dark. I guess you can go now. Guess you'll have to see my wife some other time, huh? Sure, Mr. Nesbitt. So long, kid. until you quit screaming. Are you still there? Maybe if I get down and put my ear on the ground, I could hear you better. Lady? Mrs. Nesbitt? Can you hear me? I'll hold my breath so I can hear better. not to leave your room. She's not screaming anymore. I told you not to talk about her. She's singing now. Singing? Why are you telling me these lies? Dad, she's out there and she'll be dead soon if you don't listen to me. She's out there singing. It's a little song like, I loved you fair, I loved you well. What did you say? I said, I loved you fair, I loved you well. Where did you hear that song? I told you, out in the empty lot just now. That's Helen's song, the one she wrote years ago for me. You... You can't know it. Nobody knew it except Helen and me. I never sang it to anyone, not you or anyone. I know. Margaret, we have to hurry. Now show me exactly where it was. I was so happy I wanted to cry. My dad ran out to the empty lot and started digging. And lots of other people came and helped him. No, dig, dig, dig over here. Get some more shovels. We need more people digging here. Everything turned out fine, except for Mr. Nesbitt. Dig, dig. 
But most important, the screaming woman isn't screaming anymore. The Screaming Woman was adapted from the story by Ray Bradbury. Featured in the cast were Rachel Jacobs, Beverly Rowland, Neil Barth, Mark Alston, Bryce Chamberlain, Coleman Creel, and Oscar Rowland. Original music by Roger Hoffman and Greg Hansen. Production assistant was Patrick Mee. Associate producer was Jeff Rader. Bradbury 13 was created, produced, and directed by Mike McDonough. Executive producer was Dean Van Eitert. This program was produced with the funds provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting through National Public Radio Satellite Program Development Fund. The program was produced by Brigham Young University Media Services, which is solely responsible for its content. This is Paul Fries speaking.